Beloved, I know you know that, as our faces are different, so our needs are. You have one, everyone also have. We are all facing difficulties in life, challenges at work, and people that are hard to get along with. Disappointments. If we're not careful, we'll let the pressures of life weigh us down. It's easy to complain, talk about our problems, and become negative and discouraged. But we weren't created to endure life. We were created to enjoy life. We can't control what happens on the outside, but we can control what happens on the inside. And happiness for a lot of people is based on their circumstances. As we journey together, kindly watch, like, and share with your friends. The book of John 4, 10, 14 says, Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? 12. Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. 14. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Beloved, there is a well of joy in you right now, a spring that's supposed to bubble up and continuously flow. Why don't we all have joy? You should be reminded to continually seek spiritual fulfillment and to connect with others in uplifting ways. Just as we need to regularly fill ourselves with the Spirit, it's also crucial to engage in positive and meaningful interactions with those around us. All through the day, on the inside, we should be singing. This means in our attitude, we're grateful. Beloved, in our thoughts, we're always thinking about God's goodness. Cooking dinner, you're humming the tune to a song. Mowing the lawn, you're whistling as you go along. Driving to work, this is going to be a great day, day you have made. Lord, I'm excited about my future. In some way, you're always making melody in your heart, thinking about God's goodness and thanking Him. For your life, your family, and your job. Every time you do this, something is happening. You're not just being positive or having a good attitude. You're being filled back up. God is pouring into your peace, strength, favor, and victory. Beloved, sometimes what could deflate you instead will inflate you. Perhaps the medical report wasn't good. You could easily be depressed and live in self-pity. But instead, in your thoughts, you're constantly thinking, thank you that you're my healer. Thank you that nothing can snatch me out of your hands. Because you're making melody in your heart, you're going to stay encouraged. That well of joy will keep bubbling up, giving you the strength to fight the good fight of faith. But too many people have developed a habit of being negative, seeing the worst, and worrying. You can develop this new habit of keeping a song in your heart. You have to look for ways in your everyday life, brushing your teeth in the morning, Lord, thank you for this day. Getting dressed for work, Lord, thank you that I'm healthy. In your thoughts, you keep meditating on God's goodness. It's easy to do just the opposite, focus on what's wrong. Doesn't take much effort to go toward the negative and it drains more. I can tell you're making yourself miserable. You're deflating your balloon. Turn it around and start making melody in your heart. You may not like your job, but why don't you thank God that at least you have a job? If you'll be grateful for where you are, God will get you to where you're supposed to be. You may have some big obstacles, people and circumstances coming against you, but you don't have to live upset and worried. You can thank God that He's fighting your battles. Thank Him that He's making your crooked places straight. You can go through the day with expectancy, saying, I don't see a way, but God, I know you have a way. You've done it for me in the past. I know you'll do it for me again. This is how you have continual joy. When you have joy, you have the strength you need to overcome the obstacle, outlast the attack, to accomplish your dreams. Beloved, learn how to cultivate a joyful attitude. Start saying, God, I love you. Thank you for what you've done in my life. 
That was his way of making melody in his heart. Beloved, we need to learn a lesson don't complain when it storms. Don't be sour when things don't go your way. Just keep singing, keep making melody, keep being grateful. It may be rough on the outside, but stay full of joy on the inside. Keep that song of praise in your heart. According to Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians 2, 14, 15, do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault amid a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. That means do the dishes without complaining. Drive in traffic and sit where the ushers asked you to sit without complaining. Meditate on the word of God without complaining. My beloved, sometimes we complain about the very thing that we asked God for and he gave it to us. You prayed for that bigger house. Don't complain you prayed for that wife. Don't complain that you have to work seven jobs to afford her. You prayed for that baby. Don't complain that you have to get up sometimes in the middle of the night. The good news is when you complain, you remain on a spot. But when you praise, you'll be raised. When you have that song in your heart, you're always thinking about God's goodness. You're going to rise higher. You're going to see more of God's favor. Be in the right attitude. I'm here to thank God that I made it out alive. I'm here to thank God that my children and I are still healthy and whole. Everyone had been complaining about having no power, no air conditioning, and how hot it was. Jesus said in John 16, 22, Therefore you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. I want to encourage, you have the power within you to do whatever you choose. You have the power within you to be and achieve anything. Thoughts and feelings tend to become less bothersome and go away on their own once we start giving them less attention. Sometimes, we want to add beliefs that build us up, encourage us, and support us. We want beliefs that are the wind beneath our wings, causing us to soar and to be all we can be. Beloved, happiness is your responsibility. If you depend on or wait for other people to make you happy, you will always be disappointed. Beloved, helping others and encouraging others are often acts of kindness that have more. Meaning than you may realize. We can't rejoice in the Lord when we're critical. We can go through the motions of rejoicing. We can say praise the Lord. But a critical spirit and a spirit of joy cannot inhabit the same person at the same time, Beloved, when we're joyful, our attention is fixed on the thing we're rejoicing in, and when we have given ourselves over to a critical spirit that finds fault with everything except its admirers, how can we rejoice? It's not worth it. Let go of the critical spirit and start rejoicing in the Lord, and you'll not only have joy, but you'll also have all the wisdom you need to steer clear of false prophets, hypocrisy, and whatever demon may come along dressed like an angel. Beloved, we can't rejoice in the Lord when we're holding back part of the offering of pain. Nobody told Ananias and Sapphira that they had to sell that field and lay the proceeds at the apostles' feet. Nobody told them they had to give the entire amount. But when they pretended to be giving all while they were only giving part, they put themselves under judgment. And when we give the impression that we're sold out to the Lord when in fact we're holding back, when we try to make the brothers and sisters think we're surrendered, when our private thoughts, our home life, our work habits are far from surrendered, there's no way we can rejoice. What a relief when we bring our deeds in line with our words, when we let go of this secret reserve we've been holding on to and abandon ourselves to Him. My beloved, we can't rejoice in the Lord when we're prayerless. It happens so gradually that we aren't even aware that our prayer life is drying up. A little less time in prayer, then a little less a little more daydreaming until we have our prayer life down to a dead routine. We're saying prayers, but we're not communing with the Lord of our lives. So how can there be any joy until we wake up and start to pray once more? Finally, may God helps us to clear out of the way those things that have divided our hearts, cluttered our minds, and darkened our spirits. Whatever is hindering us from rejoicing in our Lord is not worth clinging to get rid of it cast it aside, turn from it, and begin this hour to rejoice in the Lord who is with us now 
and will be with us forever.